Today I want to show you our backyard stream and fish pond and show you how we build it. I want to stress that we are not professional stream or pond builders. We're just do-it-yourselfers with a lot of determination. So there could be better ways to do this, but this is the way we build it. And since it's four years old now and still standing with no problems, we must have done something right. Here's a picture of our inspiration. It's a stream at a botanical garden. We really wanted large rocks like these, but we weren't able to find anybody that sold them that was willing to deliver them to us. We lived way too far out. They didn't want to lose all that um, time on the road traveling uh, at no price. <laughs> they just wouldn't do it. So we ended up finding a place that had the smaller rocks that was willing to deliver so here's how we build it we started out by digging the stream my husband bobby used his backhoe and in hindsight he said it would have been just as easy to till up the area with a rototiller and shovel out the trench when you dig the stream be sure to add some twists and turns to it to make it look more natural it was dug so that the sides slope and once completed the water is only two and a half inches deep once the stream was dug, we started laying the liner. This is actually rubber roofing that we bought at a second-hand store that specializes in building supplies. I'm sure that somebody's going to claim that it's toxic to fish or somehow it's going to destroy the world, but I've got to tell you that our fish haven't suffered at all in four years. We started out with 10 fish and they have happily multiplied. I built a small pond out of rubber roofing at my old house and 20 years later it was still doing fine and still holding water. If you want to buy pond liner, that'll work too. As I recall, we bought two pallet loads of the rubber roofing for less than $200. We had enough for the stream, the pond, the shed roof. We've used it for tarps and weed block and we still have this left over. <laughs> We joined the rubber roofing pieces together by using seam tape, which is made for that purpose. And we first cleaned the rubber roofing with this membrane cleaner and then applied the um, primer, which is actually an adhesive. And then you put the seam tape over the two pieces that you're joining together. It's real simple and has been no problems. In order to give the stream some interest, we added a few little falls along the way. We weren't able to do a lot of that because the stream is about 100 feet long and we only had an elevation difference of, of about 24 inches from the beginning of the stream to the end. So one of the ways we built the falls was to make the stream more narrow by placing 4 inch center blocks on each side, covering them with the liner, then cementing in a small piece of slate and some rocks with expandable foam called great stuff you can buy a black expandable foam which is made specifically for pond building but we decided to take the cheaper way out use great stuff and hide the evidence with more little rocks also by adding that piece of slate a dam was created so that the water pools up in the section of stream behind that little fall the height of whatever you use here whether it's a piece of slate or a thick rock will determine the depth of the water in the section of the stream. Another way we added interest and created pools of water was by simply putting a piece of PVC pipe across the bottom of the stream and then covering it with the liner. Here's how it looks finished. Now to finish the sides of the stream. Initially, we just folded the liner under and piled rocks on it. You do not want to do it this way. As soon as it rained, all of the soil on the outside of the stream ended up washing into the stream. So here's the correct way to do it. All you have to do is pinch up a piece of the liner, put rocks on each side of it, and then cover the um, liner on the top so that you can't see the liner. Be sure to leave plenty of extra liner on the sides. You don't want to cut it to fit because uh, some settling can occur in the next couple of weeks or months because of the water and the weight of the rocks and all. And you want to have some extra liner there for adjustment if you need it. I moved the rocks off of the edge of the liner here to give you an idea of the distance I put between the edge of the water and the edge of the liner. 
Okay, with the exception of the main waterfall, I think I've covered the how-tos of everything you see here. We put a few stepping stones in the stream to serve as a path to the gazebo on the other side. People love walking on the stepping stones, and they are just uh, rocks sitting directly on the liner in the stream. As you can see, I still need to add a few rocks here and there, but this gives you a good idea of how things were put together and how they are coming together. Okay, if you want to, you can make this a pondless stream by burying a catch basin at the end for the water to collect in, which will then be pumped back to the main waterfall at the beginning of the stream. We decided to have a pond at the end instead, and I'm glad we did because the fish and the water lilies and all are my favorite part of this whole thing. So here's how we made the pond. Bobby dug the pond with his backhoe, and he has not said that in hindsight it would have been easier to just till up the area with his rototiller and then shovel out the pond. Uh, this would be a big job with just a shovel. Okay, now I'm going to try to describe the shape of the sides of the pond. Imagine this is ground level. This is water level here was dug down approximately one foot and it's at a slight angle. Here it's basically a shelf but it's a slanted shelf and it extends out about 18 inches. Here you can dig down as deep as you like and just make that straight sided. Hopefully you can see what I just described in this finished area. The reason that we dug the sides this way was so that whenever the water level dropped uh, due to evaporation or whatever, uh, the water's edge would always be on the rocks and the liner would never be exposed. That was a problem that I had with the first pond that I dug. I dug it so that there were just rocks around the top edge of the pond and then if the water level dropped you could see the liner and it, it really looked bad. Another advantage to doing it this way is for the protection of your fish. Uh, because the, of the angled area there, the fish rarely ever swim up to the water's edge because the water is so shallow there. Whereas with my old pond, the fish could swim right up to the pond's edge and cats would sit right there on the rocks and eat up my fish. I was constantly losing fish to cats there. This way, the only way a cat could get to your fish is to wade out into the water, and a cat won't do that. We have three cats, and I don't believe they have ever gotten one single fish. And surprisingly, I don't think that the raccoons around here have ever gotten any either. So I highly recommend to slant the sides the way we did. Okay, once the pond was dug, Bobby put some extra liner in the bottom to serve as a cushion, and then he put the main liner over top of it. As you can see, we pieced together several pieces of rubber roofing to make it large enough to do the pond. You ain't got enough camera shots already. No, <laughs> I needed one of you in it. Oh, crap. For size reference, stand in the middle. Size reference. Now swim. <laughs> no. I need a dog paddle. Okay. Then we started filling the pond with water. We lapped the last section of liner from the stream over into the pond, and we started building the last fall with a large piece of slate. Here it is as a work in progress, and here it is in its finished state. It takes a lot of imagination to see this thing through. <laughs> At this point, we knew where our water's edge was, and we started adding rocks. One more thing, you need to devise a way to handle overflow in case the pond gets overfilled by rainwater. Our pond is on top of a hill, so this was easy for us. We handled it by digging a ditch at the highest water level and making somewhat of a chute for the excess water to flow out of the pond, down the chute, and then it drains down the hill. This is the back side of that chute. This is something everyone would have to figure out for themselves based on whatever means you have for getting rid of excess water. Now, how do you build the waterfalls? Well, if you look at the back side, it's pretty self-explanatory. 
Bobby stacked up some cinder blocks. As you can see, he stacked them on the back. He also put a few on the sides. And then he draped pond liner over the cinder blocks and lapped it over into the pond. Then he just stacked rocks on top of the pond liner. We bought the large rocks and the slate from a nursery and we just brought them home ourselves. That was a pallet load of the large rocks and that was quite a strain on the truck, which is why we really wanted the rest of the rocks to be delivered. The waterfall at the beginning of the stream was done the same way. Since we have two waterfalls, we have two water pumps in the pond. The pumps just sit on the bottom of the pond and one pumps water through this hose then through this pipe and into the waterfall at the beginning of the stream. The water then flows down the stream and back to the pond. The reason we haven't buried that pipe yet is we have plans of expanding on this at some point. The other water pump pumps water through this pipe around to the back of the waterfall then through the filter then it spills out of the waterfall and back into the pond. The filter is a Go Plus pressure bio filter. I'll put a link to the one we bought in the description box. I don't get anything if you click on it or if you buy it, so don't get snotty because I'm trying to save you the trouble of looking for a good filter. This filter works great and I think its greatness is derived from the fact that there is a UV light in it that kills algae. It also traps gunk inside, but I think the biggest results from the filter come from that light because honestly, we don't clean the filter all that often, just maybe a couple times a year. I'm sure it should be cleaned more often, but hey, if the pond is clean and it ain't broke, don't fix it. Actually, during the first year, we didn't have a filter. When the stream got a lot of algae in it during the hottest months, we just shut the stream off for a few days, let the stream go dry, and the sun killed the algae off. We don't run the pumps in freezing weather, and the fish haven't been affected by the pond freezing either. This little pickup tool is great for cleaning leaves out of the stream and it's also strong enough to pick up rocks that the cats knock out of place. And don't forget to add a place where you can sit and enjoy your hard work. We bought this swing from Walmart and we loved it so much that Bobby decided to build a nice house to protect it. The swing reclines and has cup holders. Who could ask for more? So that's how we built our backyard stream and pond. It was a lot of work, but we think it was worth it. I'm sure someone will want to know what this cost us. We think all total we paid somewhere between $1,100 and $1,500 for the liner materials, the rocks, the pumps, and the filter. It has brought a lot of joy to our life and a lot of life to our backyard. So we think it was well worth it. And by the way, it's cheap nightly entertainment. I hope it helps. Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> The other one's under the bridge. Under the... Uh, he's up under where you're sitting. Mm-hmm. Where? Where? He's not the least bit afraid of us. Uh-uh. Where? Where? <laughs> I am the frog whisperer. <laughs> Where? Ha, 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 ha.